Holy cannoli, that's Zoe Chica. That is a designer necklace. Hello friends, this is Barbara. Welcome to my channel, Picky Chick. I'm really glad you're here today. Today I am bringing you an unboxing of a five pound box, a mystery box of jewelry. This one is the DIY box that ThreadUp has. You know, these boxes are really getting harder and harder to get, but I was lucky enough to get one. And you might already know this, but I am a full-time seller on eBay. I love selling jewelry. So whenever I unbox these mystery boxes of jewelry, I always hope that I can find something that I can list in my eBay store lots of some things <laughs> so why don't we just get started and see what we have in today's box here we are with the box i have covered up my address with something that is i guess considered shameless self-promotion <laughs> welcome to my channel and don't forget to subscribe um, we can see here that this box has come from suwanee georgia and let's just get started with this these are pretty easy to unpack now. I remember they used to cover these with tape and it was harder, harder to get in. Not anymore. All right, as always, we take a peek of the bag outside before we break it open. I have got an empty little box here. I will tear this bag open, empty it all in here, and we will start seeing pieces one by one. Starting today's box off, we have these earrings. They are tassel earrings, some fringe here, some red fringe, and these look like they are wooden uh, with a pattern on uh, the front and there are actually several of these i'm going to pull the rest out i noticed as i was pulling the red ones out there are these pink ones we have yellow ones and here's another lighter pink one i haven't found the second earring to that yet and here's a jewelry card that matches that so and there are black dots here oh no the hole was drilled in this one but not in this one for the hanging part so that's an interesting start very festive and by the way if you do see anything that you might be interested in purchasing send me an email at kitsch.barbara at yahoo.com my email address is right here on the screen kitsch.barbara at yahoo.com and you know sometimes uh, more than one person is interested in the same piece of jewelry and when that does happen i will let you know and i'll usually give you um, a day like a 24-hour period to reply and then i will go on to the next person who inquired just so you know all right let's keep moving this next piece is a stretch bracelet this is a three strand faux pearl stretch bracelet I love the colors in this one. It's the gold, gray, and ivory color, and they feel like glass. I'm gonna try this one on just to show you there. This is very pretty, and it feels very well made. Next is this ring. This is definitely vintage. You see that sawtooth setting right there, and this is a faux stone of some sort. We have a twisted gold band. It is an adjustable ring. No marks on this one. I remember my mother had one exactly like this with this twist and the adjustable part. I'm gonna put this on my pinky just to give it a try on. That is what it looks like on. This is pretty cute. I'm pulling this out just as I found it in the box. Yep, this is the way I guess someone decided to just group these together. What a nice system this is. <laughs> yes, I'm being sarcastic. So it looks mostly like necklaces. It's going to take me a second. I'm going to go through this and untangle it. That wasn't too bad to untangle. Um, there are two categories. This is for craft and these are definitely wearable the, over here. Most of these, they kind of remind me of the 1928 style. These are all quite delicate. This is a little less delicate. Let me show you this one. So it's got some really pretty colored acrylic stones. It's an antiqued gold tone. And 
and a very tiny oval chain. So it's pretty. There's no name on it. In fact, there is only uh, one mark on all of these necklaces. I'll show that to you next. This is the piece that has the jewelry tag on it right there. It's VCLM. I have sold VCLM before, so I will definitely be listing this one. It's a very pretty cross with purple um, crystals and also some AB crystals throughout. That's very pretty. And here is the chain part, more crystal links. So it's kind of a rosary style. Very nice. Wow, we have the same system of organization here for this bundle of jewelry with this piece of wadded paper taped around, <laughs> looks like mostly necklaces. The next thing you will see is these all sorted out. We had five chunky necklaces in that group. This I'm showing you first, it's quite a statement. These are plastic flowers. This one came off, it was already off. Um, so that's going to go in the craft lot. Here are the other four necklaces. All of them are statement pieces. Starting on this side, we have a faux tortoise shell giant acrylic link bracelet. I mean, um, necklace rather. This yellow acrylic beaded necklace is so much fun. I think it's very reminiscent of like the 50s. Let me show you up close on this one. See how the beads are all different. They have kind of a marble look to them. So I thought this one was fun. Here are some peach colored faceted acrylic beads on this necklace. And finally, we have this necklace. This is a three strand faux pearl necklace, very colorful. Uh, the beads are in great shape. No names on any of these, but they're definitely wearable. Here's a pretty cool piece. This looks like a bicentennial piece, 1776 to 1976. We have an eagle spread wing. Now, I think that's gold tone, but to my eye right now, looking through the camera, it could be gold and silver tone. Um, let's turn it over. And this is definitely vintage by the way it's made. So we have, this is a brooch and a pendant. So you can see the pendant attachment right there, that little, little ring right there. So, oh, it has a signature. I just noticed that. This is made by Jerry's. So that's definitely a nice vintage piece right there, a pendant brooch. Glad that's in the box. Here is a necklace I really like. This is not branded. It's silver tone. It's got kind of a, a chunky link here and even larger oval links here that are hammered or textured. And as you can see, there are all kinds of cross charms hanging down. This is just very unique, very interesting. I love all these little charms, these cross charms. Um, these darker ones, hopefully that's coming across on the screen, have like a purpley hue to them. Um, they're, they're smooth, they're polished, and then the texture of the rest, it's just very pretty. I think someone would love this necklace and I will be putting this in my sale pile. There are lots of bracelets in this lot. Here's one of them. This is pretty darn cool. Uh, it looks like amber, but it really is not amber. These are plastic beads. I love the shape. Uh, they're kind of, um, I guess I'd say asymmetrical. I like them. As you can see, it's an elastic bracelet, stretchy, and it's pretty cool. The next piece coming out is another bracelet. It's silver tone. It's got a thin double band. It's hinged and some people call them clampers. Faux turquoise stone there and it's in pretty good shape. The only part that's turning a little bit, if you can see, is right there, the interior hinge, which of course wouldn't show when you're wearing it. So not bad at all. Here are a couple of bangle bracelets. Now this one um, is brass tone. You can see there's a stamped design around. I'm trying to figure out. I think it's floral and it's kind of in rough shape. It looks like it's turning a little bit right there. So that's going in the craft lot. And then there is this bracelet that has a brass tone interior. And also you can see the frame is brass tone. And there is a, I guess a snakeskin print in brown and it's in very good shape. 
Here's another clamper bracelet, another hinge bracelet. It's a very simple design. I like the design. I like simple things like this. Um, this is in gunmetal. It's more of a polished finish. There's just some tiny bit of marking, not too bad. I think the worst mark I see is at the bottom right there. So I'm going to try this one on. Here is a look at that bracelet. All of these items right here are going in the craft lot. This is a bunch of wire and seed beads that somebody, I guess, was messing around with. And it wasn't as bad as it could have been because things typically that look like this get caught up in everything. Some bangles that are in pretty rough shape, uh, wooden beads, some plastic earrings that don't have the backs anymore, and some fiber stuff. That pendant will be fun to work with somebody. And another leather or faux leather cord with some beads. Here is more top of the line bundle packaging. <laughs> so uh, there are, they're all earrings. So let's examine these. Let's just pull these right off. These are, I'd say they're like sort of infinity figure eight kind of squiggles. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. Just abstract, I suppose. Some pebbling there as far as the design that's imprinted on it. I'm taking the magnet to this right now. Um, hmm, it may be sterling silver. They kind of have the look to it. I'm going to turn this over and see if I can see anything. I do not see any silver marks on this, so I will give them a test to see if they are sterling silver. And right here on the screen, you will find the results of that test. Okay, let's pull off the next pair. This kind of reminds me of that candy. Do they still make that anymore? It's paper and it has these little candy dots stuck on it and you have to pull it off and eat it. <laughs> this is what this reminds me of. So here we have, we have some very simple silver ball drop earrings on lever back ear wires. Let's see, the magnet is definitely drawn to the ear wire itself. And let's see about the, the ball. The ball bead is also magnetic. So while they are not sterling silver, they are cute and they're wearable. Here's the next pair we're going to look at. And before I pull them off, I saw something printed on these. These have an LC imprint, so that's Liz Claiborne. Let's pull this candy off the paper. Well, these aren't bad at all. These are two-tone, silver tone and gold tone, and they have these little teardrop dangles on the bottom. And I like these. I'm kind of taking advantage of the paper so that you can see these better. Uh, but these are the last pair I'm pulling off of this. They're actually cute and I suspect they could be sterling. So let's pull these off. And of course we had these little drop earrings with a pink crystal. You can see the setting. It looks like a nice setting. And I'm going to turn these over and search for a stamp. Here's what the back of the earrings look like, and I really can't find a stamp. I'm pretty sure they're sterling. You see that green? They, def they definitely need to be cleaned up just a little bit. Let's see what happens with the magnet. Again, there is no attraction. I'm pretty sure they're sterling silver. So read your screen right here because I'm doing a test after the video, and here are the results of that test. Here are the last two earrings on that sweet little orange paper. <laughs> We're going to take a look at those right now. Let's get these off. These aren't bad. I like the design. Um, just a simple little coil, twisted coil with a clear crystal. And even though they are not magnetic, I don't think these are sterling silver. I will give these a test after the video, and here are the results of the test right here. They're very pretty. Last but not least is this pair of dangle earrings. It's gunmetal, and they're lever back ear wires. I like the beads. They're graduated size beads, and they're all polished except for the one flanking the center bead. So this is faceted. They're actually very pretty. This is not magnetic either, but again, I, I suspect it's not sterling silver. I will do the test on them anyway, and here is the result of the test. 
Now this is not your typical statement necklace. I like it. We have these ivory carved roses, the biggest one of course in the center, and we have some acrylic faceted uh, cabochons here, gold tone metal. There's the close up of the pendants. This is super fun. I love anything unique like this. Here is the gold tone oval chain, got a lobster clasp at the end, and that jewelry tag says made in China. I figure if I like something like this, there's got to be somebody else who would think the same, right? So I am going to put this in my sale pile. Here's another unique piece. This is a multi-strand necklace. It's got the ball chain and this part is black and this part I'd say is like more of a dark brass tone and it's knotted right there. We've got an asymmetric design with a knot and we have a lobster clasp. There is a jewelry tag on there. We will take a look at that. This piece did get tangled up in a couple of pieces that ended up in craft. Uh, it almost ended up in craft itself, but I salvaged it. And let's take a look at this tag here. Holy cannoli, that's Zoe Chica. That is a designer necklace. Oh my gosh, guys. Uh, stop what you're doing, pause this video, and look up Zoe Cannoli. I mean, <laughs> Zoe Chica. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Put this back down in order to get the magnet on it. The part here is fine, it's not magnetic. And ooh, the browner chain, if it's whatever it is, it is magnetic. That's interesting. Okay, so I had to stop what I was doing just to show you. I'm on eBay, I'm on used uh, Zoe Chico, and I have listed them from least expensive to most expensive. And right now I think there were only like seven or so. Yes, yeah, seven. So just uh, the cheapest one right now currently on there listed is $199 and it goes all the way down to $1850 um, for the necklaces. Now those are all pre-owned. Now I am seeing that some of them say 14 karat um, and we saw that there's magnetic chain here so I don't know what to make of it but I certainly am still very excited. Um, I am going to see what may have sold. So I'm going to go over here, click on sold, and from lowest to highest we have a sterling silver necklace. It sold for a best offer from 98 and the next one's a 14 karat 179. I don't know what to make of it because obviously this one is magnetic. So I won't spend any more time on this, but I am still so excited about this one. Okay, coming up next is this watch. This is a Casio watch. It's got a black band. It needs to be cleaned up, but it is not broken. It's got the blue numbers and accents on it. It's got the date and doesn't it does not appear to be running and let's see what it says on the back. It looks like a model number 5125 MRW. I will look that up and see what I got on my hands here. Here is another watch that is a silver tone bracelet watch, women's bracelet watch. And it looks like it's got, darn, I have to get the focus back in. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better. It looks like there might be a missing crystal right there and looks like another missing crystal right there. The face says Caravel by Bulba. Let's look at the back. Again, it's showing a model number there, C835012, I believe, Japan Movement. I've got my diamond selector, my diamond tester out. It cannot hurt to try to see what we have on our hands here with regard to the stones. So, And of course, when it touches the metal, it makes that rapid beep like that. I'm try the stones are so tiny. There we go. I'm touching, I touched one of the stones and it didn't do anything. I know it was very brief, but it's hard um, to do this through the camera. So I think you probably heard a... There we go. I'm touching one of the stones and it didn't do anything. So. 
It's a no-go with diamonds, but they're probably crystals. This is a very pretty necklace. It is, it's got a gold tone chain and it's kind of got a matte finish. It's not real polished. I love this round green cabochon stone. It's caged inside of that, I don't know what you call that, Moroccan um, design. It's a dome shape. Here is a look at that pendant. You kind of see the dome shape right there. And I like this and the chain is very pretty too. Let's take a look at the back and I am seeing Cam Family. I've never heard of that. The necklace is finished with that, well, what I'm calling a Moroccan shaped charm and also again, Cam Family jewelry tag and we have a lobster clasp closure. Have you guys ever heard of Cam Family? This is a first for me, but it looks like a really well-made necklace. So I have a feeling there's a nice little resale value on this one. Very pretty. I've got quite a few more bracelets to show you. This is one. Here we have a stretch bracelet. The elastic is a little bit stretched out on this, but I am loving these enameled panels. Look at the colors. So pretty. And each panel has crystals embedded. I like this one. I'm going to kind of turn it inside out to see if there's any branding. I don't know what that little star is. Um, if if it's a brand of some sort, I'm not recognize it, but if you do, let me know. Either way, it's a pretty one. I like it a lot. Here are more bracelets, Pura Vida, and these are all packed together. It looks like about four bracelets. This is brand new, as you can see. The retail MSRP, $30. So, very cool. I've seen these before. Let me get that zoom back out. There we go. Um, I have seen these before. Uh, there is the tag on it, the P, and these are cool. So you can wear these. Obviously, you can wear them separate or together. We have multicolor strings. One, two, three, four, five. I think I said four earlier. So not bad. I will check out the resale. I have sold these before, I think, um, this brand. So we'll see what happens with these. Here's the next bracelet. This is cool. This is a twisted stainless steel. It's got a lobster clasp there. And then this single little pendant, a square pendant in gold tone and some tiny little crystals embedded. So I am not seeing a maker's mark on this at all, but it's a cute little bracelet. It'd probably be great stacked on the arm with other bracelets. So that's not bad. Here's another stretchy bracelet. These black beads, I think, are plastic, and you can see that there's a lot of space on this elastic, so it's kind of stretched out. My favorite part is this Fleur de Lis pendant. It's a pave. It's crystal everywhere on this guy. Here's the back of it, and um, this is a great component for jewelry makers. Um, this will likely get put in the craft lot because of the stretchiness of the bracelet. And if I can keep this clear and focused, <laughs> I can give you a better view of it. There we go. How about a weird bracelet? I don't think we've covered that category yet. <laughs> I cannot figure this one out. It, maybe it's just, you know, someone crafty tried something. Um, but you can see it's sort of a, it's a multi uh, beaded or multi strand with seed beads bracelet with memory wire but what the heck what is this stuff um, <laughs> I can picture this going over like a dog or a cat's head with like some sort of costume for Halloween maybe <laughs> I don't know I don't know but I just wanted to show that to you because I just think it's weird now if I'm missing something <laughs> let me know down in the comment section oh I like this bracelet this is a stretch bracelet and it's got this very pretty pave cross for the center pendant. I'm working on keeping this in focus for you guys. And look at the beads on it too. I love those also. We have the gold tone and silver tone textured, almost like hammered beads. And then you can see these little crystal beads. Uh, those are on each side on the top. So this is very cool. There's the underside of the cross pendant. And I'm sure this is an artisan piece. I love it. Now, 
The only thing I would say about this is the it would probably fit over my wrist. I don't want to take the chance to, to uh, put it on because it feels either tight, too tight, or maybe drying out where it won't stretch much. I would uh, consider restringing this myself um, and hmm, wearing it for a while before I resell it. I really, really like this. Isn't that pretty? Check this necklace out. I like it. Silver tone collar, choker collar, and this very pretty pendant dropping down. It's got abalone or mother of pearl probably on these two abalone here. The bail has a filigree design on it, almost sort of like a uh, Brighton. Look at that pendant. It's gorgeous. Here is the closure on that collar piece. It goes like so. And I am looking at this to see if I can see any sort of marks. And I am not seeing anything. I'm going to try the magnet on this and see what happens. Come on, focus, focus, dominocus. Okay, here we go. Um, hmm, no magnetic pull there and none there. Now, I don't think this is um, sterling just because I noticed on this particular closure, uh, I saw a little bit of coppery. See where it's kind of worn right there? What I forgot to do is this. I'm looking on the back of the pendant to see if I can find any marks. And I'm not finding any marks. I do also see some copper showing through there on the back. So this definitely is not sterling silver. It sure is pretty though, and I am confident that I can sell this one. So this goes in the sale pile. Let's take a look at some rings. This is a very pretty one. It's kind of that gunmetal tone, and it's covered with crystals. I don't see any crystals missing from this. It's kind of a, um, a little bit of a dome shape or curvature on the top and a graduated band. This is not marked as far as um, any kind of precious metal, but I will go ahead and see what size this one is. And I don't know if you can see that, but this comes in at a size six. I am in love with the stone on this ring. I'm hoping that I can capture the, the sheen or the, the, it's almost like an AB quality to it because it's a blue stone, but then the way it catches the light in some angles, you kind of see like greens in there. And I just think it's gorgeous. In any case, there's the setting on the side. Uh, here's the band and this one, this one is marked sterling. I saw it before. Now I can't see it anymore. Um, it's a very faint setting, but it is a sterling silver. Let's bring the magnet in. So it is showing that it's not magnetic. This feels like sterling. It looks like sterling. Um, I didn't taste it, so it probably tastes like sterling as well. But um, I am going to try this on, see if it fits me here on my ring finger, which is very unusual to find rings that fit me. My fingers are so big. So that's probably an eight, eight and a half. I'm going to size it. That is just beautiful. I love it. So let's see what size this one is. Yep. So that looks like an eight and a quarter, tiny bit bigger than an eight and a quarter. I think it's catching both the green and the blue in this angle. So pretty. There are four more rings left. I'm going to go ahead and show you all the rings back to back. Here's one of them. This is very pretty also. Do you see how um, it's sort of domed and it's got this open work, almost like a diamond cut, and it's got a very simple band going all the way around. And this one does have a mark inside. There it is, 925. I think these are very old rings. See how they're kind of um, marked or kind of a little bit pitted, but I don't mind at all. Let's see what we have here on the size. I would call this a six and a quarter. And there it is on my pinky. Here's the next ring. This is interesting. This is, I think, also a sterling silver ring. 
It's got a very cool design on the top and also that's different the way it's kind of flattened out there. It looks like it's one band but it's made to look like it might be a double band and it looks like there's something inside. It looks like there's an imprint there but it's really hard to see. Let's get the magnet involved. <laughs> this is not magnetic. I want to get this sized also. This is pretty small, so that's a five. That's a five and three quarters. If I can fit this on my finger, I will model it for you. Mm, chunky, chunky, monkey. Okay, there we go. Here comes the next ring. I think all of these rings I've shown you, except for that very first costume piece with the crystals, I think these are artisan made. So we see a little turquoise cabochon here. I like the setting. And this one is a plain band and then wire wrapped toward the top. Let's see, there is something in there. Let's see if I can get it in focus. And it is printed with sterling. I think you can see that right there. The magnet is not drawn to it. I'm certain that this is sterling. And the size on this one, this is a four and a half. I'm certain that I cannot model this one for you because of the size of my fingers, <laughs> but this is an awesome ring. I like it. How cute is this ring? Look at that. It's a little alligator or crocodile. I can never tell which is which. But this is so cute. And then this is uh, what the band looks like. So it's almost like a loop. I don't know if you call, I don't know what you would call that. There's a plain band at the bottom and then each side of the band has that little loop there. I'm seeing a mark there that says 925. This is just cute as all get out. I'll tell you. Um, I'm confident that that is sterling, but I'll bring the magnet in just to stay consistent with the other rings. It's not magnetic. What size are you, cute little thing? Okay, we have about a seven, a seven and three quarters. There we go, I'm modeling this on my pinky finger. That is just the cutest ring. All three of these are from the same maker, Ms. Accessory, with an IE at the end. And if you've watched my channel, for a little bit, you might know which ones might be my favorite. Bomp, 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 bing, those. <laughs> I love owls. I love, love, love owls. So I will be likely keeping those and putting it with my owl collection. I'll have to show you my owl collection, my owl jewelry collection in a video. That might be fun. But in any case, let me show you my faves. There they are. So we have silver tone and we have green eyes with uh, clear AB crystals around that. Now these say S925 made in Korea or designed by Korea. I don't know what that means. Um, the back of the card looks like so. I will go ahead and hmm, they're not magnetic so I'm not sure. Maybe they, they really are 925. Um, I'll check it out. Check your check the the check the screen um, when I get done with both of these, and I will go ahead and give them a test and let you know what I found out. Um, may as well. Yeah, these aren't attracted to the magnet. Let's take a close look at these guys. On the left, we have a gold tone crown with like a white enameled bottom, clear crystals on that. Those are very cute. And also on the right, gold tone, clear crystals, and the pearl embellishment. A flower or leaves, I'm not sure. All of these are wearable, wearable earrings, and I think they're all pretty darn cute. So let's go and take a look at all of them. Let's start with these drops right here. These are so pretty. We have teardrop crystals, all set in gold tone. These are faceted. I am pretty sure they're glass, but so pretty. We have a hook ear wire. When you look at them real close, it's very clear that they are not real gold, but they are quite lovely. 
Here are two pair of earrings. They're identical in design and of course different in color. On the left here are gold tone metal set earrings. These are plastic faceted crystals in like a golden color and then on this side are silver tone and you can see that those have yellow and green and they're quite pretty. They're dangles and I like them. Next is this pair of earrings in silver tone. They're different. You can see that the post goes through the ear and then this part uh, hangs down from the back and we have some plastic faceted beads there or settings that are very pretty. This catches the light and the blues and the greens. It's almost like an abalone shell, um, but they're cute. Here are two pair of earrings. Both are post earrings and here we have a square plastic peach colored faceted setting. Very simple and here are some very cute bees. Also gold tone. We have some clear crystals in there and you can see his little body has the yellow and black stripe. Those are sweet. Here are some silver tone earrings and both of these are premier designs. The pair on the bottom here are clip-ons. There's the back of the earring and the ones here have sort of like almost like a monogram look to them. In fact, are they monograms? I can't quite tell, uh, but they have a, a lever back hook closure and both are very attractive, both premier designs. Here's a pair of dangle earrings. They are kind of an antique silver tone and have like a filigree design with a very dark gray crystal, faceted crystal. These are very cute. There's no name on these, but there's, they're pretty. Next is this pair of hoop earrings. And before I picked them up off the table, I did want to get the magnet in on the deal here. And was that a pull? I don't think so. They look like they could be sterling silver. We'll have to see. They are quite pretty. They've got a click top ear closure right there and they could use a good cleaning. But I love this design. I love the filigree on that. Now read your screen right here. I am going to give these a test after the video and here are the results of the test. All of these pieces are wearable, but they're going in craft. Here's this one, which I think is the cutest of all of these. This is a very pretty hinge bracelet with blue uh, focal crystals there, but there are all these other places here. I'm seeing way too many crystals missing, so I'm putting that in the craft. And then everything else that you see here, let's get that back into focus. Um, uh, like this shell bracelet, it's wearable, but it's kind of sort of fading. And there are just some fun pieces here for a crafter. Wooden beads, plastic beads, plastic beads, plastic beads. That's the story. Let's move on. Here are the rest of the bracelets. This is a very pretty handmade bracelet. Actually, I like the beads better than the actual bracelet because it's got these really fun glass wedding cake beads on it. Same goes with this one. Now I'm not crazy about the design, but I really like these little glass beads with the dots on them. This one looks like a handmade bracelet and plastic beads, faux pearls, faux crystals, or well, plastic crystals, I should say. And this one, they tied all three strands together with this black ribbon. And here we have a statement bracelet. It's a two strand gold tone chunky chain on top for one strand and then these pearl faux pearl links i kind of like that the way the they have a frame so they have a a chunky pearl and then this gold textured frame around each one that's fun there is a toggle closure i'm not seeing a name on this one and there it is on this is a fun piece i like this one this is the balance of the brooches from this mystery jewelry lot I'll show you one by one. This is a beautiful brooch. I didn't realize that there were two missing, missing crystals from it. Um, it's faux marcasite, so from a distance, it looks like they are marcasite, but no, it's not. So this is going in craft. This I'm pretty certain is vintage. We have a very pretty gold tone finish on this with the leaves and the rose. And there is a look at the rose. So that's real pretty. We have a rollover clasp and there is a mark right there. 
oh geez i cannot tell what that this is cruel and unusual punishment when it's not very clear i cannot make that out i'm trying to move it around to catch the light maybe to make it more readable if you have any idea what that says please let me know in the comment section but this is a very pretty vintage brooch here's the next one this is quite pretty i always love teal so this has got i believe plastic crystals in uh, teal and then a smaller crystal clear clearish blue and then these are matte blue silver tone and let's look at the back i am not seeing a maker's mark on this one this does have a rollover clasp right there and it's quite pretty i like this one this is a striking brooch now this center crystal here is glass not plastic and these other ones they might be plastic or acrylic but i love the different shades of green and this is all set in gold tone kind of a filigree design i like the oval shape a lot and let's turn this guy over i am not seeing a maker's mark on this one again we have a on this side we have a rollover clasp right there and ouch that hurt i just stabbed my palm <laughs> Be careful, Barbara. Uh, but this is a, a, quite a pretty brooch, too. Here comes the next piece. Now, this is a faux pearl necklace. Very dainty, very tiny faux pearls. There are probably three or four strands twisted together. There's a name for this kind of necklace. It's torsade, T-O-R-S-A-D-E. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing it right. It might be torsade. <laughs> I don't think it is. It would be pretty funny if it was, and I'm saying it wrong. Um, and then right at the top here, we have a hidden clasp. So let's see. On this side is where you press down right there, and it comes out like so. There's the hole where you reattach, and it has a nice little snap. It snaps right back into place, so it's... It's going to stay on when you wear it. This may be an artisan piece. Please stay focused, my camera. Okay, so yeah, this is, I think, an artisan piece. It's very dainty, very feminine, and for sure, I know that I can sell this one. I like the simplicity of this necklace. Uh, it's, we have a simple, round, gold ring pendant, and it appears that it's gold tone now part of the chain might have wear on it because part of it looks silver tone so they both start out gold tone down here and then it looks like it changes to silver tone i don't think that's by design but i'm not sure this has an adjustable clasp so you pull it to make it shorter and then you pull it down here to make it longer that letter m means that this is a madewell necklace we have come to the end of today's unboxing. We are looking right here at my very favorite piece from the whole box, which is this Zoe Chico necklace. I think it holds a lot of promise. Let me know down in the comment section if you had a favorite piece. I thank you for spending time with me today, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.